Southminster Church as we gather today on the Lord's Day uh, to celebrate Holy Communion uh, with not just with ourselves, but today is World Communion Sunday. So we are uh, celebrating with Christians around the world. Uh, and also today is uh, the Commemoration Sunday of our brother in Christ and one of the great reformers of the church, Francis of Assisi. So that's why we had animals posted uh, before service and then after service you'll see our beloved members of the congregation that are fuzzy again. <laughs> so let us gather and remember our baptismal unity in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God is love and endures forever. Keep watch for a word from the Lord. The righteous live by their faith. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise, if you'd like, and sing our opening hymn.
Friends, God's grace has given, was given to us in Christ before the ages began. In spite of God's love for us and gift of love to us, we often act in destructive and hateful ways. Trusting in Christ's mercy that never ends, let us with honesty confess our sins before God and one another. Gracious God, who made covenant with our ancestors, we gather here today as a rebellious people. We want to act out our, your intentions for us, but we get sidetracked by the false glitter of the world. You tell us to honor creation, but we use other people, animals, and plants for our own gain. You offer bread to every living creature, and we steal that bread from our brothers and sisters in the name of greed. You promise us new life. But we shrink back in fear, clinging to our death-dealing ways. Heal us, O Lord, lest we destroy ourselves and the planet. We need your healing presence among us, that your good intentions for all of creation might be fulfilled at last. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We call to mind your promises, and therefore we find hope, O Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies are new every morning. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. As a people forgiven, redeemed, and freed, let us remember the teaching of Christ. I give you a new commandment, that, that you love one another as I have loved you. surround the righteous, righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it, for there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirits is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Our second reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Jesus Christ. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that is in Jesus Christ. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you, and with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us, the Lord of the world, the word of the Lord. Increase our faith. 
To which the Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. The following hymn, it says the candle will sing once, I'll sing a second time, but it's actually kind of um, in what we like to call a call and response kind of form. You will hear me sing a phrase, and then you will sing it. Um, it looks really complicated when you look at it, but when you listen to it, it's very easy to just say what I sing. When we get to the last part that says, and then the mountain will move away, let's sing that a bunch of times because it's really fun. If you only have faith, just like a little seed of mustard. If you say just what Jesus would have said, everybody say, if you only have faith, just like a little seed of mustard. This is what Jesus would have Sundays where I actually put a title in the bulletin. <laughs> if anything, to be a marker to help remind myself and for us what today is about, especially as we gather together as a community of faith, as we gather today as a community of faith, not only in this place, but also throughout the world, as we gather on this day, as we celebrate the memory of Francis of Assisi. Someone that showed humility and humbleness in front of power and who called for simplicity in life. And in that constant thanksgiving and encouragement. Recently, one of the big gurus in business uh, management, consulting, and leadership development uh, from uh, University of Pennsylvania, which Don may remember his name, and it's escaping me at this moment. Um, he does a lot of books and, and writings, and I quote him a lot on Facebook, but he's a good guy. It'll come to me. Yeah, it'll come to me too, <laughs> later on, while I meet my, my muffin during fellowship time. But anyways, one of the things that he said is that in leadership, a true leader is one that is constantly providing not only vision and asking good questions, but one that is constantly also giving thanks, thanksgiving and encouragement. And even to the point that sometimes leaders in their position 
start feeling a little run down because they are giving all this thanks and encouragement to their workers, but they don't get much from their bosses <laughs> or from anybody else. And one of the things that this author, this guru was saying is that in all actuality, really, if you do, if you need encouragement, it is giving encouragement to others. Because if you see it in the right light, when you're giving thanksgiving for somebody for what they're doing and you're encouraging them and you're equipping them and all of that, then you get to see them blossom into what the potential they have. And as they blossom, even though they may not have words to say back to you of thanksgiving and encouragement, just seeing their life blossom and then do exactly what is needed in this particular time for what is needed. That is, for a leader, thanksgiving and encouragement. And that's kind of what we see in the letter of Paul to this young whippersnapper named Timothy. You know, Tim Timothy, if you read Paul's letters, uh, many times what you'll see is Paul writing something and saying, you know, encouraging a congregation that is in trouble or in conflict and trying to get them to reroute themselves and to reorient themselves, usually to reorient towards Christ. Um, and then at the very end, he'll say, oh, and by the way, Tim says hi. <laughs> so Timothy was kind of Paul's private secretary, a companion, uh, just like Luke was. But in this particular letter, we actually get to see a little bit more of this relationship that Paul has with Timothy. We get to learn that Timothy comes to this faith and to this apostolic work not out of nothing. He has been nurtured. He has been given encouragement, nurtured by his grandmother and his mother. These strong women of faith. And as I tell my New Testament class in the Bible, in the New Testament, any time where you see somebody's name in the, in the scripture, that is important. These were two very important women of faith that probably not only nurtured and encouraged their relative, their son and grandson, Timothy, but also probably whole congregations, whole communities of faith. From the historians that we have, we actually learn that these women were the center and the linchpin of the Christian community that was growing in that area. They were the ones that cared for the poor, the sick, the dying, the orphans, the widows. It sounds a lot like deacons, doesn't it? And Timothy saw this. And they encouraged his faith. They gave thanks for his faith as he grew. And when he was going off the road, they probably also gave him words of wisdom that only a mother and grandmother could give. And then we have Paul. Paul who says that he was the best of the best of the Pharisees, of the people of faith, of the Jewish faith. He was a righteous man. He knew the laws of Moses left and right. And he was one that went out to kill the heretics, the followers of Jesus. Until that faithful day that he fell off a horse and he saw Jesus. Jesus asking Paul, Saul, which was his name at that time, why are you persecuting me? It is in that moment where Paul, Saul is, is blinded and then he is brought into this community that he was persecuting. The same community that Timothy was raised in. And in that context, Paul 
was nurtured, just like Timothy. Paul was encouraged, like Timothy was. Paul, his life was given thanks in prayer by those women and men in this community that Paul's life transformed from the inside out to the point that he was given a new name, a new life, and Paul was a new creation. It is out of that relationship that he speaks to Timothy because when Paul speaks to Timothy, he is not so much as this father figure, although he is that in a sense, not as so much as the Greco-Roman patriarch that is talking down to a child. Paul is talking to a fellow brother. He calls him a son because in many ways he is nurturing Timothy in the faith. But at the same time, there is this mutuality of love between Paul and Timothy. And so just as much as Paul is giving words of thanksgiving for Timothy's life and his ministry and how he has blossomed in the world and encouraging Timothy to continue on, that even though he is a young whippersnapper, Christ is with him and he can do the ministry to which he has been called to. Just like Paul has done. In this letter to Timothy, this first letter, we see this transition period of the, the father, teacher, apostle, emissary of Christ. He is in, then shifting over and telling Timothy, even though I have ordained you with the laying on of hands, we are now equals in this ministry. In this ministry of preaching the good news of Jesus Christ in this apostolic or ministry of being an emissary to the world and in this ministry of teaching. Paul, in this letter to Timothy, is sharing with him that no matter where they are in the world, Paul may be imprisoned in Rome and Timothy may be pastoring a congregation over in Ephesus, in modern-day Turkey, or somewhere, no matter where they are, no matter where they are, no matter the distance between them, they are always together because of the communion of Jesus Christ. And if we are in communion with each other, in many ways, that is a way of encouragement. Knowing that today when we, on this World Communion Sunday, break bread and share the cup, even though we are doing that physically together here in this congregation, through the work of the Holy Spirit, we are doing that also with Christians throughout the world, especially those Christians that we highly admire. Like N.T. Wright in England, one of the great theologians. Some of the best preachers in Africa. Some of those nuns and monks that are standing up for those that are on the margins in El Salvador. Wherever they are, sharing in the bread and the coffee. We are there with them, and they are here also. For when we break this bread and share this cup, we are giving thanksgiving for every life that is in Jesus Christ. Whenever we break this bread and share this cup, we are giving encouragement to not only ourselves, but also to everyone who professes Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As we break this bread and share this cup, we are being encouraged by Jesus Christ himself, and he is giving thanks for our lives as we follow him. In these days, as the prophet Habakkuk talks about, as well as 
what G Jesus is getting at in the Gospel of Luke. Sometimes it is really hard to think about discipleship, being a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. There are so many things that can lure us away from the path. And hence why we always need those church mothers and fathers to give us encouragement and to help us bring us back into this communion of God. Many of us at times may look at our lives and look at what's going on in them and, and pray to God and pray and ask for more faith. That there is something that we are lacking. That if we had more faith, we could actually follow the way of Jesus. But as we see in Jesus's story in Luke, it is not so much about the amount of faith that you have. It's about how it is nurtured and encouraged to be practiced. We all have faith. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But that faith has to be nourished, like through the bread and the cup, and love for one another. That faith also has to be watered like all plants, remembering our baptismal vows, what we have promised to God and to each other. We have to nurture this faith that we have been given so that it can grow strong and that it can be active in ways that God desires in the world today. When we come together, whenever we come together physically like today, <clears throat> or whenever we are spread out in a diaspora. Maybe we can connect by Zoom or by social media or something like that, but no matter where we are in this world, I hope that we are always giving thanks for each other and we're always giving encouragement. Through words, through deeds, through the sharing of sacrament, and the study of the word of God, the scriptures, by praying with each other. Because that is how faith grows. Not only faith, but a faith that is practiced. A faith that is practiced to the point that whenever two or three are gathered in the name of Christ, we can move mountains to the glory of God, in whose name we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we gather at this table, let us remember the faith that we share at this table with Christians in all times and all places. In the words of the Ecumenical Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious child. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who receives from the Father, who is the Father, Son, and Son, he is worshipped from the Lord. 
who has spoken, spoken to the prophets. prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for our holy communion. Holy God, creator of all, seen and unseen, you formed the universe in your wisdom and created all things by your power. You set us and families on the earth to live with you in faith. We praise you for good gifts of bread and wine and for the table you spread in the world as a sign of your love for all people in Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ's table is wide and his welcome is for all. Jesus dined with sinners and saints, with farmhands and foreigners, with disciples and doubters, with children and cherished friends, with the outcast and the outspoken, with lepers and loved ones. And just as he ate at others' table, when Christ set his banquet table, he welcomed us all, too. As we gather around Christ's table, we are united with all of God's beloved across the world, through the love and grace made known in bread broken and a cup passed. So come to the table where we witness Christ's love and peace for all. Let us keep the peace of Christ's love. Let us all taste and see the goodness of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, for you looked upon all your hand, all your hands wrought and called it good. You smile upon purple mountains soaring above wildflower plains, where grasses raise their backs to meet your spirit's caress. You send clouds scuttling across reflective waters and set stars to wink upon the earth in the deep, knowing delight. You call the tune of dolphins dancing in the play of waves. As giraffes amble across savannas, birds sing in full-throated praise, and children of various hues giggle as they run free in your image. Despite your created goodness, we use our freedom for ourselves alone without regard for your intentions for all. Still, you chase after us and save us from sin's harm, freeing us from slavery to give us a new world flowing with milk and honey. When we chase after other gods, you call us back, back to you through cries of prophets, which we ignored. Until at last you send your own child to be for us the goodness we refuse. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choir of creation and all the saints of all times and places who forever sing to the glory of your name.
Christ for coming to us as a little child to live baptized in the muck of our fallen world. Embodying Christ's desire to bless all people, you spoke peace to a warmongering empire and were blessed to be a blessing to all people. When threatened with the terror of crucifixion, you did not keep silent but stood up with resurrection new life to turn the bread of human affliction into manna from heaven and to turn the bitter dregs of sin into the cup of joyful celebration. So as we await your coming among us in the fullness of your sovereign glory, we proclaim the mystery of faith. to live as Christ's body in God's ministry of repairing our broken world. Come, hover, hover over us now with your bright rooting wings in the breaking of bread and in the celebration of this cup that our eyes may be open to recognize Christ among us and in all who share in this feast. Knit us more closely together in the fellowship of your sovereign way. We offer ourselves, our lives, our resources to be, be your hands reaching into, into the world. world. With your unfathomable compassion, fill us like breath fills flutes. To, to be, be instruments, instruments of your peace. Where there is lack of regard for your creation, prod us to speak, speak up. up. Where people fail to see the dignity of all persons, open, open blind, blind eyes. eyes. Where there is silence, about others being hurt. Impact us with a desire for justice. Lord, your creation groans under abuse. We the earth with goodness. Your children are starving across this globe. To those who hunger, give, give bread. bread. And to those who have bread, give, give hunger for justice. justice. People languish in prisons, some unjustly, some without repentance, and some for standing up for your way. Release the captives, Lord. O oh God, our sovereign, leaders in all lands take bribes and afflict their peoples. Topple oppressive powers to your rule, and send the rich empty away. Your church luxuriates in the comfort of faith. Send us to be your servants in service to the world. The sick suffer forgotten in pain. Heal their hurts in body, mind, and spirit. On this day, as your universal church, remember the faith and ministry of St. Francis of Assisi. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, out of love of your delight in your whole creation, with perfectness, perfectness of joy, O oh God, you have made us and all living things. You are even more wonderful than what you have made. We thank you for giving us pets and all animals as you take care of us. So also we ask your help that we might take care of those who trust us to look after them. By doing this, we share in your own love for all creation. O oh God, your world is wonderful. Gather all these prayers and praise and those prayers on our hearts and join them with those of all the saints, especially those that now rest from the earthly labor and now sing praises to you. Gathered around your eternal heavenly table with our great high priest and host, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us to say our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. 
always and forever. Amen. Friends, do you remember on that night when our Lord was arrested, as well as all of those days after he rose from the dead, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, whom he called friends, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Eat, all of you, remembering me. Friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thanks be to God. In the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, remembering me. Friends, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. For as often as we eat of this bread and partake of this cup, we do proclaim the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus until he comes again. Come, let us sing a hymn to the Lamb. Jim or Judy, who are on the sides. After you partake of your cup, there are little baskets basically underneath the uh, thermostats. Um, and place your empty cups in those, and then you return to your pews by the outer aisle. If you are unable or uncomfortable coming forward, do not fear. Deacon Gary's here. <laughs> Gary will come to you. So, Jim and Judy, come forward. <laughs> Gary?
Let us pray. Oh Lord, help us rise in your resurrection power from this table where you, the ruler of the universe, have served us by your own hand that we may extend your arms of peace to a world at war. This we ask through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. May all honor and glory and dominion be yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Into our fellowship. On page 16, today is World Communion Sunday, and uh, 